Hi, this is chapter 2, clip 2, cash flow statement. Now, we're going to look at the financial cash flow statements. This is uh, um, ver uh, close to the cash flow statements we pr you probably learned in previous class, in accounting class, but uh, we have different perspective. So let's look at it. First of all, mm, many, many finance um, professionals says cash is the king. Cash is the king doesn't really mean that uh, cash is the only important, but I can say that the cash is one of the most important items in finance. There is a reason. So in, in accounting, uh, so for example, income statement, you have net profit positive. That means that it's generated uh, positive net profit, generated positive um, profit, which may increase the fund value. However, we more focus on the generate positive cash flow instead of the positive net profit itself because net profit is calculated by the rules called uh, the US gap. I mean we can trust the rule but there are some really um, uh, rules that may not show real cash flow so we really uh, focus on cash flow itself because the cash flow tells pretty much everything um, pretty straightforward. So there are two different types of cash flow statement. One is the contents cash flow, the other is financial cash flow. The contents cash flow, there are three sections. One is operation, number two financing, number three investing. So you probably learned it in accounting class. I'm not going to uh, look at the detail about that. But basically it's cash flow from different type of activity. So, Mm, it reconciles the change in cash from last year to current year. Um, we'll now focus on free cash flow, also called the uh, financial cash flow. So what is the cash flow? C cash flow is basically the flow of cash, uh, one of the most important pieces of information from the financial statements. Now the counting uh, statement cash flow really um, does not provide the information we are interested in because the information we are interested in is how cash is generated by using the asset. And because the asset is acquired by certain financing, usually either from uh, debt financing or from equity financing, so we also interested in how it is paid to those who finance the asset purchase. So we believe that the cash flow should uh, generate the cash flow generate from assets should go to either the debt holder or equity holder because they are the people who provide the fund. So what is the financial cash flow? Financial cash flow is also known as the free cash flow. St to compute the financial cash flow, we have to start with the this rule. The idea of the counting, the identity rule. Assets should be the same as liability and the equity. It's the same idea. Your asset, your cash flow. So the reason why we acquire asset is we try to generate positive cash flow from, from using these assets. So ca cash flow from this asset, which is called the cash flow from assets, should be the same as the cash flow to these people who provide the debt financing, we usually call them liability holders, creditors, or bond holders. So cash flow to liability holders plus to provide funds through the equity financing, we usually call them equity holders, shareholders, stockholders. So it should be said cash flow to equity holders. So you know, briefly, we can simply say cash flow from asset equals to cash flow to bondholders plus cash flow to stockholders. So we're going to look at one by one. Now, cash flow from asset. So this is the cash flow generated by utilizing the assets. There are three parts in terms of uh, the the characteristic of the cash flow. So the first one is the operating cash flow, which is the cash flow from operation. 
to doing business. Number two, net capital spending is about fixed asset changes. Third one is change in networking capital is about the change in non I mean current asset, I'm sorry, current asset. So there are three parts. So let's look at from operating cash flow. Operating cash flow may be calculated from the income statement and is remember the income statements there is an item called EBIT, EBIT, Earnings Before Interest and Taxes. It comes from the revenue minus, so from revenue, so it is from the revenue, right? And, sorry, cost of goods sold minus depreciation cost and that's EBIT and this EBIT you should add back the depreciation because the depreciation is actually non-cash item so even though you subtract the depreciation to get the EBIT this should be add back because this is not cash item. So for cash flow, you have to add it back. And then minus tax, this will be the operating cash flow. So you should add back non-cash expense such as depreciation, sometimes amortization if you have one. For this class, we only think about the depreciation because we want to sim we want to make it simple, as simple as possible. Mm. So that's how to compute the operating cash flow. Let's look at the example here. The Smith Company had the sales of three hundred thirteen thousand, cost of goods sold two hundred twenty eight thousand, interest expenses five hundred, and depreciation. 49,000 and tax rate 34 percent what is the operating cash flow so the first of all you have to have the EBIT so let's compute EBIT from revenue minus cost of goods sold minus depreciation it is it will be going to the EBIT right so to get the EBIT EBIT will be 313,000 minus 228,000 minus 6,500 okay so it will be 6, how much is that let's compute the 313,000 Minus again 228,000 minus 6,500, which is 78,500. So that's EBIT. Now, from this EBIT, even though interest expense is not related to the operating cash flow, we have to actually include that because to calculate the taxable income you need interest expense so your taxable income is now the EBIT 78,500 my I'm sorry oh, it's interest expense yeah so Let's look at it again. Eraser. Yeah. It's wrong. Okay. Yeah. Let's redo again. From EBIT, EBIT 313,000 revenue. Cost of goods sold 228,000. Now the depreciation expense is 49,000. 
right? Yeah. Then how much is going to be is thirty-six thousand dollars. So that is EBIT. Now the taxable income is EBIT, so it's 6,000 minus 6,500, which is interest expense. So 29,500, and you take, you can calculate tax. So tax is, this taxable income, 29,500 times tax rate, 34%. So it's going to be ten thousand thirty dollars. That's taxes. So your operating cash flow equals to now EBIT thirty six thousand, and you add back the depreciation expense, right? Because this is non cash item. So plus forty nine thousand minus taxes ten thousand thirty. It's going to be thirty six thousand plus forty nine thousand minus ten thousand thirty will be seventy four thousand nine hundred seventy dollars. That will be the operating cash flow. Okay. So the operating cash flow can be easily computed by uh now constructing the cash flow statements and that's probably the first step you have to do you have to build a, build the statement first the, the income statement first and just a plug number into the formula then that's probably easy way to, easiest way to compute the cash flow i mean operating cash flow all right now next point is the net capital spending The net capital spending is now is about the fixed asset. It's about fixed asset changes. So for example, if fixed asset increase, what happens? It means that you basically buy so of increased fixed asset, you acquire more fixed asset. And then if you acquire more fixed asset and then it's basically use cash. Okay? So you use cash, it means that your cash flow decreases. Operating relation if the fixed asset in and it decrease decrease then you you sell more fixed asset you you receive cash cash flow increase so you look at the gross for purchase or sale of the fixed asset to look at the net capital spend if the gross purchase is basically uh, if you have positive gross purchase so it means that the fixed asset increase gross fixed asset increase then you use cash cash flow decrease if gross fixed asset decrease then you sell more asset increase cash so it's going to be the change in gross fixed asset sometimes you don't have any information about gross fixed asset then you need to have this one change in the fixed asset plot current depreciation how how to find this formula I'm going to show it actually so as you know the gross fixed asset has two components so yeah let's look at actually this way okay. 
So, there's a count called growth fixes. Uh, uh oh, again. Yeah. There's a count called growth fixed asset, right? This growth fixed asset is the cost of the asset. So for example, if you buy, purchase, one million dollar building, Your gross fixed asset is always one million dollars. Never change because that's the cost, right? All right. And then there's called a net fixed asset. The net fixed asset, now this gross fixed asset actually depreciated, right, over the year. So. Net fixed asset is value of the fixed asset after depreciation. It means that if your accumulated depreciation amount is say 300,000, for example, then your net fixed asset is your gross fixed asset 1 million minus accumulate depreciation 300,000 so it's going to be 700,000 so you, it means that the net fixed asset equals to gross fixed asset minus accumulate depreciation accumulated depreciation right so that's the definition now let's look at it. So change in growth fixed asset maybe rewrite like growth fixed asset this year, say time t, minus growth fixed asset last year, t minus one. And if you apply the formula here, net fixed asset equals to Growth fixed asset minus the accumulated depreciation. We rewrite this is gross fixed asset equals to net fixed asset plus accumulated depreciation, right? So you rewrite this equals to now net fixed asset time t minus plus accumulated depreciation t minus net fixed asset t minus one plus accumulated depreciation t minus one. We can rewrite this. We can rearrange this by net fixed asset time t minus net fixed asset t minus one. Now plus accumulated depreciation t minus accumulated depreciation t minus one. So this is basically the change in net fixed asset, right? And this is change in accumulate depreciation and change in accumulate depreciation is simply the current year depreciation expense so net capital spending which is the change in gross fixed asset is same as change in net fixed asset plus depreciation expense Yeah, that's net capital spending. So you have formula. If you have gross fixed asset number, you can use this one. Or if you have net fixed asset and, and the depreciation, you, you, you can use this formula. Okay. So in the content statement, the cash flow, see investing section. This is about the CFI. So let's look at the example. Babco industry has ending net fixed asset of 703,219 and the beginning net fixed asset 741,089 dollars. Depreciation expenses 62,340 
what is the amount of net capital spending for the year? So we have ending net fixed asset, beginning net fixed asset, and the depreciation. So we can use actually the net capital spending equals to change in net fixed asset plus depreciation, right? The change in net fixed asset is ending net fixed asset 703 to 90 minus beginning 741 89 plus depreciation 62,340. So you have $24,470. That's the net capital spending. So you spend this much to purchase more fixed asset. Therefore, your cash flow from asset decrease. So this is a negative factor of the cash flow from asset. Next one is changing net working capital. So changing net working capital is about current asset. Net working capital is, is current asset minus current liability, right? So if your current asset increase relative to current liability, then your net work capital positive and increase. If current liability is increased relative to current asset, you actually uh, net work capital changes is negative. So if net working capital is positive, you spend cash to buy more current asset, so decrease cash. If your net working capital is negative, I'm sorry, this is typo, this should be current asset. You receive cash for selling more current asset. So it's increased cash. So it's basically saying, if you spend money to buy more current asset, then cash decrease. If you uh, receive cash by selling more assets, then increase cash. So changing net working capital is uh, an Again, another negative factor of the cash for from asset. Let's look at the example here. So given the following information, what is the change in net working capital? And there are one, two, three, four, six, seven items of, uh, actually. One, two, three, four, five, six items in the statement. First of all, what you have to do is so you have to depreciate each item is current asset or current liability or non-current asset or non-current liability to get the net working capital. Cash, obviously current asset, right? You know, current account receivable current asset, inventory current asset, net fixed asset is now fixed asset, so it's not current. The account payable current liability, right? And long term debt is not current one, the short term one. So these two uh, um, counts unrelated. Only four come related. And these three above asset, this one account payable is about liability. So let's compute. Now we, we need to compute the ending net working capital first. Ending net working capital equals to now ending current liability. I mean current asset minus ending current liability. Right? So so your ending cash is seven hundred twenty-three plus current receivable three thousand one hundred five dollars and inventory five thousand eleven that's the asset size minus payable two thousand four hundred eighty dollars so your ending net working capital is six thousand three hundred fifty nine dollars that's ending net working capital now beginning net working capital is now beginning current asset minus beginning current liability, right? So beginning current asset is cash $817 plus account receivables $2,604 inventory $4,285 minus account payable 
$2,908, which is $4,798. So actually, networking capital increase, right? So change in networking capital is ending $6,359 minus beginning $4,798. So $1,561 will be the change in that working capital. Again, this is positive. It means that your cash flow from asset decreased by this much. Okay. So let's wrap up cash flow from asset. Now, The firm has operating cash flow $22,750, change in net working capital $420, and net capital spending negative $1,500. That means that your cash flow from asset is now OCF, operating cash flow minus net capital spending minus change in net working capital, right? Operating cash flow $22,750 minus now net capital spending negative $1,500 and minus $420 is going to be $23,830. That's the cash flow from assets. So that's how to compute the cash flow from assets. Now let's look at the next item, cash flow to debt holders. It's basically sometimes called the cash flow to debt holders, but cash flow to also bond holders. Bond holders, same thing. And we usually denote it as CFB. So cash flow to bond holders. There are two different types of cash flow if you purchase the bond. So let's look at the next slide. If company issue the bond, so they issue the bond, sell the bond to creditors. Creditors are bond holders or debt holders. So these creditor actually pay cash to buy bonds, so it's a loan, right, to company. And the company pay periodic interest, so this is a one cash flow and loan repayment if the bond is mature. So there are two different types of cash flow. So there are three different types of cash flows um, in bond transaction. And we can actually wrap up too. So for plus interest paid means that you, so this is basically bond cash flow to bond holders, debt holders. So the cash flow is from company to bond holders if interest is paid, so interest expense is positive factor. Now, then your borrowing is, if your borrowing is increased, so that increase, if that increase, it means that you issue more bond. If company issue more bonds, what happens is, company now receive more cash. So cash flow direction is actually from bondholders to company. So it's negative factors. So then debt holders receive cash from interest payment and any payoff of the debt, it increase cash flow to bondholders. If the firm takes on new debt, the debt holders give cash to the firm so it decrease cash for two bond holders. So example here, Raptor's long-term debt is 52,600 as of year end, and the long-term debt was 47,900 at the beginning of the year. So if you compare two, that increase, right? That increase means that company is more debt, so the cash flow to bond holders decrease. Now, during the year, the company paid a total of 4800 I'm sorry, in interest. So this is interest payment to bondholders. This is positive factor for cash flow to creditors, cash flow to bondholders.
to CFV equals to the plus factors interest payment so interest minus net new borrowings net new borrowings is basically change in the long term debt so interest is 4800 minus net new borrowings is now ending 52600 minus beginning 47900 which is $100 so that's cash flow to bondholders now same as same same logic now let's look at the cash flow to stockholders so again there are two different types of the cash flow here one is the dividend the other is the new equity rate if firm pay dividend the cash flow to stockholders increase so from paid cash dividend to stockholders because the ca because cash direction is from company to stockholders it increase cash flow to stockholders second issue the firm issue and sells new equity now they raise money then they sell stock then cash flow direction is from shareholders stockholders to company because stockholders pay cash to buy companies newly issued stock so cash flow to again to stockholders decrease decrease okay so let's look at the example mansfield and company has net income of 136,800 for the year and they paid 84,000 individual the balance is show the ending common stock balance 220,000 and an ending paid in surplus balance 330,000 the beginning common stock balance 180,000 the beginning paid in surplus balance is 250,000 what about the cash for two stockholders here that income is not related to IM because it's simply just the common income so cash flow to stockholders is now first one is the dividend And second item is net new equity raised. Dividend simple. Dividend is simply eighty four thousand, right? Now minus. Now there is two different type of item here. One is the common stock. The other is the paid in surplus. Um, this all equity account. So the common stock account is based on the cost of raised money. So it's based on the face value of the stock. So if the face value of the stock is say twenty dollars, and you issue hundred issue, hundred hundred stocks, then common stock balance is twenty times hundred, which is two thousand, right? However, in fact, the price you really uh, the company sells the stock in initial public offerings is not the face value. Investors usually pay more money than that. So really, if IPO stock, the, the initial stock sells like $30, it means that you have face value $20 and another $10 premium, right? That premium called a paid in surplus. So paid in surplus is also the money that stockholders pay for the stock to buy the newly equity, uh, newly raised equity. It means that it also cash flow. It is also cash flow from shareholders to company. So you have to add it. So in that case, your paid in surplus per share is ten dollars. You issued one thousand stocks, so paid in surplus count is ten thousand. So this case. You also have to add the paid in surplus account to get the really real equity account. So ending account is now ending common stock. There is the two hundred twenty thousand, right? And begin paid in surplus three hundred thirty thousand minus beginning one hundred eighty thousand common stock. 
and 250,000 paid in surplus. So your cash flow from stockholders, you can, if you compute that, is negative 36,000. That's cash flow to stockholders. That's how to compute the cash flow, financial cash flow. So after you compute everything, you actually have to match if, uh, and we have to see that if the cash flow from asset equals to cash flow to bondholders plus cash flow to stockholders. So in class, we're going to solve more detailed problem for that and how to build the financial cash for more detail. Finally, in summarizing, cash flow is the king. It means that cash flow is the most important factors in finance, as I said. And we have an identity rule here. Cash flow from asset equals to cash flow to bondholders plus cash flow to stockholders. So it means that the cash flow generated by all assets or using assets must be generated by or given to the debt, which is the debt financing bond and equity stock. So this is the end of the chapter two.